everybody, welcome to today's video. This is example number two of the LLMware Fast Start series. Uh, we're going to be covering one of my favorite topics today, and it's probably one of the least understood topics in the whole LLM space, which is embeddings. Um, and oftentimes you hear about embeddings, you hear about vectors, you hear about semantic retrieval, natural language queries, and all these concepts tend to get blurred together. At its core though, is actually a very simple idea. And the very simple idea is you take a model, the model's been trained. The model's been trained typically on, you know, a trillion or more tokens of language. And the way that the model has been trained in one form or another is on either predicting a next token or filling in, you know, a missing token. And so it's learned throughout the course of doing this how to represent language. You take this model, and this model is typically called an encoding model or an embedding model. Most of these are based on architectures like BERT or Roberta. And what this model does, like all models, it has an input and it has an output. The input that comes into the model, just like any LLM, is a huge chunk of text. The text gets tokenized, it gets converted into numbers, and then it goes through a whole series of step-by-step -step transformations at each layer of the model. And at each layer of the model, the model, in effect, is building a representation of that chunk of text. The output of the embedding model are the, quote, the vectors. It's the model's representation of that text that you input into it, converted into model speak, if you will, converting it into the way that the, the model sees the world, which is ultimately some n-dimensional vector. And it says that vector that's what I think that text means. And so in a common you know, uh, embedding model that has 768 embedding dimensions, it converts any chunk of text into a 768 dimension vector, literally a list of 768 numbers, f long float numbers, usually between zero and one or minus one and one. So it converts it into these numbers. The power of this then, is it's actually converting text, which can be very hard and very difficult to say, How is, is this text like that text or is this similar to that? It's converting it into a geometry, if you will, a geometry defined by this vector embedding space. And how does anything work in geometry? If point A and point B are close to each other, point A and point B are considered similar to each other. And so the way that any type of retrieval then works you don't go back and look at the text. I think that had some words in it that were interesting to me. Now, in contrast with any other form of text-based search that we're probably used to, the way that semantic search actually works is it's actually comparing all those vectors. So when you enter in a query, that query gets converted into a vector. And then the way that the vector database returns the right answers of things that were similar to that is not by looking at the words. It looks at that vector it compares it to all the vectors that are stored in that database, and it retrieves the vectors that are the most similar to it. So again, you can think about it as a geometry problem. And in that geometric space of the embedding, if things are close to that, those are the things that it's gonna return as the result. So that, in a nutshell, is how an embedding model works. Text comes in, vector comes out, store those vectors in a vector database. When you wanna run a query, the query text gets converted into a vector, and then you look for the most similar vectors. Those vectors then you associate with some set of text that gives you your semantic query results. So I hope that that makes sense conceptually. We're actually gonna dive in, we're gonna look at the code, and we're actually gonna go see some of this in action. So here it is, it's example number two. I'm gonna flip over to an IDE. And what we're gonna do in this example, we're gonna build a library. We walk through that in example one, so I'm not gonna cover that here, but we're gonna build a library exactly the same as what we did in example one. We're going to use a SQLite and face, so there's no uh, install required. Copy, paste, and run. You shouldn't have to install or set up any kind of database to use this example. What we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna create that library. We're gonna skip over that for the purpose of this demo. And then we're gonna come back to embedding models. If you wanna take a look, we support in LLM, we're a pretty broad set of embedding models. If you wanna take a look and, and see some of those options that are available to you, please do. But what we're gonna do for the purpose of this demo is we're just gonna pick the mini LM Espert. It's a small, fast, open source embedding model that we include 
include in our default model catalog. If you wanted to use, let's say, the OpenAI text embedding ADA, you will need an OpenAI account. I and mean, all you have to do is just uncomment these two lines and then put right here your API key for OpenAI, and you can swap out the mini LM expert for that text ADA. And then we're gonna go run the course script. So what's in the course script? It's actually really, really simple. One of the powers of the approach that we walked through in the first example is once you create that library and you've decomposed the documents, you've indexed and text chunked, and you've put it into a database, it becomes really easy then because each one of those little text blocks, those chunks, we're gonna pass that into our embedding model. The embedding model is gonna do its trick of outputting of an embedding vector. That vector then we're gonna go put in our vector database. And from a code point of view, all you have to do once you've created your library is run this one line. And so you'll see this one line in a lot of our examples. It really is that simple. You've created your library. You call the install new embedding method. You pass the embedding model name, which is just a name that you found in the list of embeddings in the LLM or model catalog. You pass in the vector database, any of the vector databases that we support, and then the batch size. So what it's actually going to do, it's gonna go do 100 at a time. And there's a lot of parallelization typically built into the model, can usually handle large batches and do them all at once. The vector database also can. There's also a lot of efficiency usually in inserting into a database more than a single instance at a time. So you can experiment with that batch size parameter and just see what the right trade-off is in terms of your system, your memory, and, and the speed and performance of it. We will then, once we're done, we're just gonna look at that embedding status, confirm that in fact, the embedding status was created. And then we have created a, a vector store. We've taken the 1,272 text chunks. We will have indexed them, created vectors, and stored it, in this case, in our face uh, vector database. And now we can start using it. And again, the whole point of it is to start running queries. We're gonna run, just for the purpose of this, something incredibly simple. Incentive compensation, it isn't even a long phrase. Certainly we would encourage you to experiment, you know, construct more creative and longer and more interesting queries, but we wanted to give something just really, really simple. And as we showed in the first example, when you wanna run a text query, you create a query object, you pass that query object to your library, and then in this case, you're gonna run one of the methods for a semantic query. You pass in your query, there's some other optional parameters about how many results you want, things like that. And then we're just gonna start iterating and looping through those query results so you can see what we've got. In this case, just for purpose of display on the screen, we're gonna show the distance, and I'll, I'll explain what that is in a minute. And then we're just gonna print out those results. And then at the end, we're just gonna look again at that embedding status just to confirm that the records were created. So with that, let's go ahead and let's run the example. The example is gonna run pretty quickly, but I think it'll give you a good illustration of how this process works. So you can see before the embedding, we had zero embeddings. We parsed all the documents, and now we're pushing pretty quickly through creating all of these embeddings of the 1,272 text blocks. You can see it's over in the blink of an eye. We were doing them in batches of 100. Each one of these 100 are pulling 100 text blocks, each text block being run through the model, those vectors getting pushed um, into the vector database. You can see then at the end, we did in fact create um, 1,272 blocks, some view on the total time that was taken, and then we ran our query. And what we pulled up here, because it's just, it's a very simple, useful thing that you're gonna wanna do a lot, is the document that we found, the page number that was on, and then just a snippet of that text. There is a whole bunch of other metadata that's associated with those query results. We would encourage you to print it out, explore it, and start figuring out how you start to get comfortable using some of that metadata. But the key thing I wanted to call out, if you recall in the explanation of how an embedding model works, you can think about it as a geometric space. And it's the geometric space between vectors. And so when you do a semantic retrieval, the database is actually saying which of these 1,272 blocks are most similar to the embedding from my query, which in this case is the words incentive compensation. So it didn't look, it didn't know that in fact, in this text block, it says incentive bonus or it says annual cash incentive. It actually did it from the representation of these vectors and the distances between them. So in this case, the results that we're going to get back are in inverse order, meaning the closer the distance, the more similar the meaning 
of this text block to that query. So getting used to that distance and how that works and starting to understand that for different embedding models is something we would really encourage you to do to get more comfortable and understand how that kind of embedding distance is actually working. So you see at the end then, we just check our embedding record. We embedded with the mini LM expert model. We put it all in a face database. The embedding dimensions for this model are 384, which is quite small. Again, we'd encourage you as you start experimenting with other models, most will be 768. The OpenAI are, I think, 1568, 1564, and so on and so forth. So most of the embedding vectors are gonna be 700 to 2000 is the range you're gonna see. Um, for most, this happens to be on the small side of models. And again, just to come back to the code, what we would encourage you to think about as you start rolling this out and experimenting with it is to move beyond the face no install, it's a file-based vector database, into one of any number of vector databases that we support. And I'll flip over and show you that in a minute. And the other thing we really encourage you to experiment with is uh, print out this list of embedding models and start experimenting with different models, getting to understand some of the results and some of the different characteristics, as well as their fit for purpose then for particular types of knowledge domains. And as I said, just coming back to the repository, so this is the example that we just walked through, but I do wanna point out that we have in our example section, a whole set of examples under embedding that really showcase how to use different vector databases. We have a series of examples with Milvis, LanceDB, Mongo Atlas, Neo4j, PG Vector, Pinecone, Quadrant, Redis, how to use some other kinds of models. And what's also in the repository then, if you have a Docker installed on your machine, it's actually really simple using these Docker Compose scripts to start pulling in and instantiating and getting a test instance of at least the open source vector databases. Get them running on your machine typically in a few minutes. So we would encourage you as sort of a homework item, kind of as a next step in looking at this example, start to experiment with that, with some of the vector databases and with some of the embedding models. That concludes uh, the example, happy coding. Hope everybody found this to be useful. As always, any questions, any issues, any problems, please come join us on Discord and uh, bring us your questions and we'll be happy to engage. Thanks again, take care everybody.